Hi, everyone. We're honored to be here. Um, we're going to talk today about 500 years of Black history in South Florida. Uh, my name is Dr. Portia Hopkins. I am a data uh, curation and community archiving postdoctoral research associate at Rice University in my third year. And this is a fellowship that's funded through uh, the Council for Library and Information Resources. My name is Luling Huang. I'm also a CLEAR postdoctoral fellow. I work with the data curation for energy social science at Carnegie Mellon University. And my name is Sinatra Smith, and I am the CLEAR slash BLF postdoctoral fellow in data curation for African American studies at the Philadelphia Museum of Art and Temple University Libraries. So this project actually developed out of another project that Portia and I were working on for the Association for the Study of African-American Life and History and the National Park Service. This um, project was a lot more historical in order to document the 500 years of Black history throughout the region known as South Florida, which includes Palm Beach County, Broward County, Miami-Dade County, and Monroe County. So you get Palm Beach all the way down to the Florida Keys. And while we were working on this, we found out that we had an opportunity to apply for a micro grant, which would afford us the opportunity to bring on Luling and his data scientist capacity and kind of expand the original goals of the project and do some additional work. Yeah, it was, I was very happy to, to join this project with my experience working with quantitative social science data and also some expertise in energy, social science and energy poverty. So one of the th great things about um, being able to expand this project was that we were also able to expand the objectives so that they also aligned with our um, expertise and our research interests. And so you'll see in the objectives, there's some data science things, some human geography things, anthropological and ethnographical things, um, and historical things that are all kind of embedded into this. And um, it was really great and an exciting opportunity. And we were very grateful to Clear for providing us um, access to funds so that we could expand this project and um, in essence, expand the research that we were able to complete for the um, for the project. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the data collection and analysis. Um, as mentioned before, I am a historian and a community archivist. So I was very much interested in the primary and secondary source research. Um, I am the type of person that likes to be in a repository. I enjoy being in the archives. So I was very fortunate to be able to um, take two trips to Florida to um, look through their archives and their repositories. Um, we met some incredible people there, including Dr. Doris Field, uh, excuse me, Dr. Dorothy Fields in Miami, and then also Emmanuel George out in Broward County, who was able to point us to additional primary and secondary resources um, that we were able to use to um, document the history there. Uh, we we were able to identify five major themes in this 500 year histor historical study, including labor, politics, and activism. Black excellence and Black culture. So the other part of this project is to visualize the geospatial social inequality in four counties in South Florida. In order to do that, we first pull the data from the U.S. Census, the U.S. Department of Energy about energy poverty, and also the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention about air quality data. And um, for the anthropological side of things, there was an ethnographic historic site documentation process that we went through. We actually traveled to the region twice. And while when this uh, conference is going on, it'll be our third trip. And we were able to explore 116 active and inactive sites across the four counties. So we physically went to every single site from Palm Beach all the way down to the Keys that we were able to drive to. Um, and determine whether or not they were there. If they were there, we took a photo. If not, then we just kind of have some historical information about them. And as Portia mentioned, we were able to, co to connect with local cultural preservationists um, and you know augment our study in a way that includes other types of scholarship that are being produced outside of what we're able to find in academia or in, in, the, in the archive. 
And so the last step of the project was to bring all of these different areas together into a collaborative multimedia story mapping um, environment through ArcGIS story maps. And through this effort, we were able to coordinate the text media and shape files to visualize residential patterns, quality of life and cultural production. So in here, I was able to actually embed our story map. And um, the first thing to understand about ArcGIS story maps is that it's like semi-collaborative. So I was the only one that was able to go in and make any edits because I started the story map, but I was able to pull in um, resources from Luling and Portia and integrate everything into the story map directly. Um, so uh, we thought it might be helpful to organize things by county. So you'll see at the top, there's a bar with each of the four counties that are included and you can click on them and it'll take you directly there and you're able to see all of the information that we have about each county. Now I'll just jump in real quick and talk a little bit about the historiography. So one of the things that's included in the story map, um, researchers will be able to come to the story map and get a sense of the themes that I had already discussed, but then also really understand how this historiography of the region was built. We spent a lot of time trolling footnotes, trying to figure out who these scholars were in conversation with and who they were referencing. Um, Zotero was definitely our friend for these collaborative projects and turns out those annotations are fantastic, a fantastic way to um, keep tabs on what resources are going to be most useful for telling these stories. So um, we were able to pull this together in an abbreviated historiography that we included on the story map. And so, as I mentioned before, we were documenting the historic sites by county. So within this Palm Beach County map, you can see all of the sites. There's actually 23, I believe, total, mostly churches and schools in the case of this particular county. But we were able to uh, bring those photos in and um, have, you know, an, an image of it. We were able to take it. Some, in some cases, it's actually a satellite image because there's like geological uh, formations that are relevant to Black history in some type of way. They were named after someone or something like that. So we've got the images when, as, as often as they're available, um, the name of it and why the site was, um, was significant to the study and any type of web presence that is available about the, the site itself. For the geospatial visualization part, we show the data by by the US census track. Um, there are several variables that we are visualizing here, including uh, median income at, for each census track and the, um, the proportion of black population uh, and also education level, uh, air quality and energy poverty level. So users can also click on the map to see the detailed information for each census track. And that brings us to the end of our presentation and we look forward to answering your questions. Thanks.